Hello there and welcome to Arctic Retro. I hope you are all fine and uh, today I have something uh, very exciting uh, on my bench. And if you haven't already uh, recognized these two machines, uh, they are two Amiga 2000s. <music> exciting with these machines uh, is that uh, I get to keep uh, one of them and uh, I got both these from uh, my friend Kjell Ove and uh, he let me fix them up and uh, then I can keep uh, one of the machines and if you don't already follow his uh, YouTube channel you should uh, check out the uh, Koiro Retro Innovations. All right so this might be a, a long video uh, probably several episodes, I don't know, because uh, I really don't know the state of these machines at all, uh, what's inside uh, or anything, if they work, nothing. I know nada about these two machines and that's uh, quite uh, <laughs> exciting actually. All right, so let's take a look at uh, both of these machines and uh, yeah, find out the status of uh, these machines. First I'm gonna do a, just a visual inspection of the cases and the keyboards and as you can see there is one keyboard that uh, is missing three keys and uh, otherwise they look to be in good shape, um, nothing broken, missing a couple of um, these front covers and uh, of course a little dirty and uh, dusty, that's normal. <laughs> So there's actually two different keyboards. Um, this one here with uh, this uh, label with a little bit smaller text than the other one. Let's uh, take a look at the, the other one. This one is the one with the missing keys and uh, this one has uh, another label which says Commodore Amiga 2000. I actually never had an Amiga 2000 I have never had one in my possession, so this is really exciting. <laughs> so the cases look okay, a little bit of dirt, I think that's easy to remove. This one has a switch for something, I don't know. <laughs> so now I'm gonna take a closer look at the first one and uh, I'll label this as a number one. On the back side we can see that um, it says Commodore and uh, something about the power supply and uh, it actually has a power supply that's the first thing that i'm noticing because uh, i don't know this could be missing parts and it also has a motherboard i obviously see that um, but no expansion cards then the number two uh, also backside uh, has a power supply and a motherboard and it has an expansion card. That was the exterior and now let's uh, take a look inside and uh, remove uh, the case. The cabinet must go off and then we can compare them side by side and see uh, the insides of both. What I'm fearing the most is uh, the dreadful uh, battery that uh, can, can have leaked and that is the death of many of these machines. The death by Varta as it's called. There's actually different screws on the machines, so um, because there are obviously different models, and I uh, keep the screws separate. Well, seems to be a little bit of uh, different kinds of screws on this machine. It has different <laughs> screws on this side. Oops. 
So this one, it had a switch, but the switch is not connected to anything. Uh, now we can see uh, the contents and uh, yeah, both have a floppy drive and actually both has a hard drive, although this one is just uh, completely loose inside. This one has an uh, expansion card, not sure what, gonna take a look. Both motherboards seems to be okay and no damages, a lot of dust and seems to be missing no vital parts. Uh, CPU is there and oh yeah, both have the battery. Varta. There's the battery. I can see some uh, some blue stuff, a little bit of corrosion, so but it doesn't look too bad, so there is hope. This one too has uh, just a loose hard <laughs> drive. So what size is it? It doesn't really say, it says just A2000 on this one with a serial number. So how is the battery on this one? Well, there is leakage, but uh, doesn't look too bad. Actually, well, I can see a lot of green stuff all over the CPU. Uh, <laughs> so this will require some uh, cleaning. And of course, this uh, large expansion card is of course uh, the hard drive controller. It also has uh, uh, some port that goes out of the machine, maybe to connect uh, another hard drive externally, I don't know. So that's roughly uh, the status of the internals of uh, these two machines. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is to disassemble everything and uh, do the cleaning stuff and uh, take out uh, both of the motherboards. And then after the cleaning, I'm of course gonna test if they actually works. And later on, we're gonna test uh, yeah, the hard drives and things like that. Uh, so there's a lot of work. All right, so let's get right to it. So where do I begin? <laughs> I think I'll start with uh, this number two and uh, yeah, do one machine at a time. I'm uh, probably going to skip uh, some parts uh, because uh, I will be doing the same tasks twice. So uh, no need to show everything in detail. I'm going to take out uh, the different uh, components and the uh, motherboard. So I'll start by removing this frame that holds the the floppy drive, the floppy drive of course needs to be serviced uh, as well, but uh, first let's remove uh, this one. And this one also holds uh, the power supply. Then the motherboard, it has at least four screws and a lot of uh, plastic clips. Damn, that was a long screw. <laughs> A shorter one uh, in that corner. Any more screws? Do I spot a screw? Mm, no. Then it was just three screws. Removing the clips, just uh, take a plier and press them in like that. It's not that easy when you have <laughs> them all over the board. I just lift the whole thing and then uh, press with the pliers and push it down. There. Two out of uh, nine. <laughs> All right, I think it's uh, loose. Uh, 
almost still one uh, hooked on all right wow the size of this motherboard <laughs> It doesn't fit, uh, almost doesn't fit on my bench here, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> so let's take a look at this battery and the mess around there. So it obviously has leaked, but uh, not too much actually. So uh, I think there's hope for this. As you can see, there's some uh, green colors on this uh, contact here and also on the CPU, on the pins. Uh, but uh, the board itself doesn't look to be um, corroded, so uh, yeah. Let's check the back side. Back side, you can see a little bit of uh, traces of uh, some uh, green stuff, corrosion. Uh, battery acid uh, has corroded uh, something here, but uh, I think this is not that much. This can be saved. But this battery needs to go immediately, so uh, removing it. This is smack in the middle of a large ground plane, so <laughs> it's not easy to melt these solder points actually, but uh, I'm just adding a little extra solder. There's the bastard. <laughs> All right, so here we can see the carnage and uh, yeah, it's a little bit uh, corroded around here and uh, but it's not too bad actually. I'm going to take this uh, board down to my garage now and uh, blow it free of all the dust and dirt and then I'm going to start cleaning up this mess. So the dust is uh, gone and uh, this is the other uh, board and uh, this battery also needs to go and it has uh, spread a little bit around here. Uh, not really sure how um, bad this is, but uh, we'll see. I'm gonna remove it anyway. On the back side of this board there is nothing, so uh, that's a good thing. First of all, I'm gonna clean the area really good with uh, lots of uh, alcohol and uh, just to remove the, the loose corrosion and uh, everything. So there's actually a spread uh, something all the way over here and uh, yeah I'm gonna and also in this connector there's a little green there I'm gonna remove uh, the nearby CPU and this uh, yeah, kickstart room just to be able to clean inside the socket it's uh, pretty stuck down in this socket <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god, can you see all the green stuff on the, the pins of the socket and yeah, <laughs> on the CPU as well. Look, so this needs to be cleaned really good and uh, the way to do that is to use uh, vinegar or something uh, like that. So I'm gonna continue cleaning everything with uh, alcohol and the whole uh, motherboard just to get rid of all the dirt and uh, any uh, oxidation and anything like that. So this is a lot of work, but uh, I think it's uh, worth it.
this is a PCB number two and uh, while there's not that much uh, visible damage uh, around the battery there's even more uh, green stuff on uh, the legs of the CPU and on this contact <laughs> and also on this one so all right cleaning this one Just going to try and clean off a little bit of uh, this CPU. So I have uh, used my uh, fiberglass pen to clean off as much as possible on uh, the chips and also on to, uh, to the board. And uh, now I'm going to use uh, some uh, vinegar to uh, neutralize the corrosion and I got this uh, effect it's uh, called uh, it's vinegar acid 35% and it is uh, made for cleaning not for uh, food <laughs> so I just put the, the affected chips into this bowl and then fill it up with uh, vinegar And then I just leave it there until I think it looks uh, okay. And for the motherboards, I am also gonna use the vinegar and uh, just try and uh, soak it into the affected parts. So I'm just using a brush and um, yeah, try to. Um, Soak all the affected areas with uh, some vinegar. Try to make it uh, not uh, drip on my floor. <laughs> yeah, I think that uh, looks okay. Next board as well, on top of the other. <laughs> all right, so now I'm gonna leave it like this for uh, couple of hours I think I'll check into uh, in between just to see uh, uh, what happens and if it uh, dries in then I'm uh, gonna maybe apply some more I know it uh, smells really strong of uh, vinegar here but uh, that's actually not a bad thing uh, vinegar it actually cleans the air in the, the room so uh, yeah Nice. So uh, the vinegar has been working for uh, some hours now and uh, most of the green stuff is uh, gone. I'm just gonna rinse it off with the water and then um, some uh, alcohol. So I'm just gonna rinse uh, this area here with water, not the whole uh, board obviously. All right, now everything is uh, clean and dry and I have already started to um, scrape off a little bit of um, the solder mask just to yeah, make sure there's no corrosion on the copper here. So I'm using uh, this Dremel tool just to file off uh, the green solder mask. So I think this is starting to look good. There is no more green uh, stuff on any contact uh, on both uh, the boards. And uh, now I'm just gonna use a little bit of electronic cleaner in the sockets. And also in the, the contacts. I think that's it for um, removing uh, 
the solder mask and now I need to cover it up. It looks uh, very shiny and um, yeah, looks like there's no uh, contamination or anything. So um, I'll use this uh, green solder mask I got uh, on eBay. Just need a little bit, not much. <laughs> And this will uh, stay liquid, it won't uh, dry up until you apply UV light. And this of course prevents uh, new corrosion going into uh, the copper. So it doesn't look great, but uh, it works. Then after applying, I use uh, this little uh, flashlight that has uh, UV light in one end and the regular light in the other end. And yeah, as you can see, it is uh, ultraviolet. And then I just light onto the patches for a couple of minutes until it's hardened. It's a little bit of work. Uh, if I had a larger UV light, I just could have cured the whole thing uh, in one go, but uh, this is what I have now. All right, I think that's uh, much better and uh, the cleaning is uh, done and uh, as you can see the, the chips, the CPU and uh, the kickstart ROM, uh, I have cleaned them with the fiberglass pen and the electronic cleaner and then I'm going to insert it, see if I can make it fit, it's a quite a big uh, chip this. <laughs> And this one had a label which I uh, have uh, saved, so I'm gonna glue that on. Alrighty, I think that was uh, that for uh, cleaning of the two motherboards. And uh, now I actually want to test if they even work, which I don't know, so that's gonna be exciting. <laughs> I have connected uh, board uh, number two uh, to uh, one of the power supplies and uh, connected the uh, uh, RGB cable to my TV, so uh, let's see. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, there is a life. Hey, look at that. It actually works great. <laughs> and it has 2.0 kickstart ROM and uh, yeah, that's really nice. Next motherboard to the test, number one. And this one seemed to have had the most uh, problems with uh, battery leakage and uh, stuff. I'm a bit anxious about this one. And I'm connecting the other power supply now just to test if that one's working. All right, here goes the second one. One, two, three, on. All right, it uh, spins up. Black screen. Yes. Kickstart ROM 3.1. <laughs> Excellent. Fantastic. So now I'm really happy, both uh, machines are working, both power supplies working, at least this far, <laughs> but there's still a lot of more work to do. Great. It's time to do a little bit of cleaning of the cabinets and I think this is the largest cleaning job uh, I have ever done. <laughs> 
one of the cases have um, had something leaked inside uh, <laughs> so that's a bit strange looks like um, yeah water or something has corroded the metal The bottom and the inner case I just uh, rinse with clean water, nothing else. Next to be serviced is uh, the two floppy drives and I have uh, removed them from uh, the metal case and uh, as you can see there is some uh, corrosion going on so that needs to be taken care of. And the screws uh, also has a little bit of corrosion uh, on them, so I just uh, soak them a little bit vinegar, a couple of hours. That should do the trick. So for the drives, I'm just gonna use my uh, regular method, uh, which is cleaning and uh, lubricating. I haven't tested these drives, so uh, I don't know if they work or not, but I'm gonna test that uh, after uh, servicing. It's not the same type actually, two different kinds. This one is a Sankyo. And the other one is a Chinon. So the front on this one won't come off easily, so I'm just gonna leave it. I don't wanna risk uh, breaking the plastic. This one has two screws holding the cover, the other one has no screws. <laughs> and of course one more screw here, I didn't notice that. <laughs> There they are, and uh, oh boy, this uh, needs a good cleaning look. <laughs> and as usual, I'm gonna take these uh, down to the garage and blow them uh, free of the dust. Uh, I don't wanna have all this uh, dirt uh, flying around in my lab here. The drives are now uh, completely dust free, uh, at least almost. Uh, now I'm gonna just spray everything with uh, alcohol and uh, clean away all uh, the remaining dirt and uh, there is always something. So I just use uh, cotton swabs and go through everything and uh, it's uh, <laughs> a lot of work but uh, it's kind of uh, relaxing and uh, yeah, like a meditation. <laughs> so you can see already all the dirt. Obviously the most important thing to clean is actually the drive uh, axle here and uh, the read and write heads uh, of course. Um, and also there are some uh, metal rods that the drive head is moving along and uh, you need to clean those uh, as well. Try to turn the axle and uh, slide the head uh, all the way back and then all the way forward to be able to clean everything. For the drive heads, use um, clean cotton swab with alcohol. Just wipe it uh, gently. Do not use uh, too much force. And then just clean around. Then I turn it around just to wipe off the alcohol. 
and the other one underneath. All right, the drives are clean and shiny and I'm gonna lubricate a little bit and I have uh, this silicone fat, which uh, should be good for this purpose. Just apply a little bit on the, uh, the drive axle and also on the, here where the head is moving. And also on uh, these axles you, where the head is moving. I noticed that uh, one of the drives had a couple of uh, rust stains on uh, the metal cover, so we remove that. It also had on the inside, I already took those. Then I use a little bit of uh, rust remover. All right, there you go. Two service the floppy drives. And so now I can actually test if they are working. So I opened the, both the power supplies and um, removed all the dust. This one had a lot. This one was a bit cleaner. And the next step is actually to um, recap those. And I have uh, ordered all the uh, electrolyte capacitors. Um, expect them to arrive in a couple of days so uh, these are ready then but before uh, recapping there's other issues that uh, need to be dealt with and uh, as you can see there is uh, some corrosion on the inside the metal uh, frames inside the machine and uh, i need to remove that and to remove that i'm gonna take it uh, outside and just uh, use a steel brush and uh, get rid of most of uh, the rust and then I'm gonna use some uh, lye which I uh, have used before with uh, success to remove or neutralize uh, the remaining corrosion. This is uh, caustic soda and when you mix it with water you get lye. And this is a very strong and basic solution that will uh, neutralize any acids and uh, corrosion. And I have used this method before with uh, success on larger metal parts. But be careful, it's uh, quite dangerous. You should wear gloves when you do this and <laughs> well, <laughs> I have gloves, but I forgot. And it also produces uh, gas that you should not breathe in. So I'm just gonna leave it there for a couple of hours, I think. The metal pots are out of the bath and uh, look. So, no, everything is just shiny or a little black, but uh, all the corrosion is gone and I took uh, quickly uh, dried them with a cloth and then uh, sprayed with some uh, alcohol just to remove all uh, the remaining water so that it won't start uh, rusting again immediately. So now I'm just gonna see if I can find any lacquer or something to paint over it. I'm gonna use this uh, spray paint, it's a silver color so it should match. I probably should have used the primer but I don't have but uh, I think this is okay. And it says on the instruction to spray a couple of layers with the two minutes uh, intervals. Probably not a good idea to, to use this indoors, but today it's a, a bit of a storm outside and <laughs> raining. All right, I think that's it. I have covered all the spots. The paint has dried and uh, yeah, I think it came out really good. Not the perfect match, but the purpose uh, is of course to protect the bare metal. I have uh, done a little bit more cleaning. Uh, there was a little bit more, yeah, I don't know, white 
stuff on the board and uh, also some of the solder points and uh, vias are in this area are very dark so I have touched up on some of them on both sides on the other board I have a uh, I applied a little flux and then a little uh, extra solder tin uh, on this area here because it uh, seems a little bit uh, dodgy um, solder joints and also around here so I think it's uh, looking much better now. So now I'm actually ready to uh, start some recapping and uh, I'll start with uh, both the motherboards. However, uh, one is uh, revision 4.4 and this one is revision uh, 6 and they are not similar, they have different caps. This one has uh, axial caps here with uh, the other one has uh, radial caps. So uh, yeah, and I only have a kit for this one so uh, I might do some uh, tricks then to be able to fix that but uh, We'll see, maybe I have uh, the correct caps. And this is a kit for Amiga 2000. I ordered this uh, from Amiga kit, I think, or Amiga store, I'm not really sure. And here's the layout for um, all the caps, uh, just to, yeah. I made, I used to make a little drawing where all the caps are in respect to each other and uh, total of 29 caps uh, on this board. All right, so this recapping is gonna be a lot of work. I'm not really looking forward to it, but uh, it uh, has to be done. <laughs> I checked up uh, the capacitor kit and actually counted uh, all the caps and uh, compared uh, with uh, both uh, these boards. And it actually turns out that the kit contains uh, extra caps so that um, you have enough for both uh, revisions, even if there are some differences in values. And this board has actually two more caps than the other. And uh, for the axial ones uh, that comes with the kit, you can actually use those here because it's a dual, uh, yeah, what you call it. Uh, there are actually support for uh, soldering in uh, axial caps instead of uh, radial ones uh, and uh, these are connected as you can see also the silk screen indicates that. Same goes for uh, this one too, uh, 220 microfarad. It has also uh, dual holes for uh, both types. So that's really uh, nifty. I have never seen that before on any PCB. Alrighty then, let's uh, go on with the recapping and I'm starting with uh, this one first. Heating up my um, desoldering station, um, but uh, you actually don't need a desoldering station. If you want to do some recapping, you can uh, always use a little cheap uh, pump like this. Of course, uh, the soldering station is uh, a lot quicker. There's going to be a lot of uh, desoldering and resoldering and um, a lot of smoke. So I have my fan uh, running, which is homemade. Well, actually the fan is not homemade, but <laughs> it's a PC fan or 12 centimeter, I think. Uh, and uh, I have some uh, carbon foam glued to the back that uh, will actually um, clean the air that goes through. Then a little cleaning of uh, the pads and uh, remove the remaining solder tin. In goes the new caps and uh, double check the polarity and the values. It's very easy to do a mistake <laughs> if you don't check everything. 
on this board the polarity is marked with a plus on the plus side and the plus side is of course the longest leg to keep the caps um, uh, steady when I turn the board I usually use this uh, uh, gum here it's like the blue tack only it's white <laughs> all right solder time and I see my tip is a little bit uh, dark and uh, crusty and not shiny so I'm gonna clean it first so that's better I had a little flux uh, on the solder points before soldering at least on the old boards I usually use uh, additional flux snipping action and we're done with uh, the first four but not completely I usually clean off uh, each of the solder pads with some um, alcohol after soldering so that was the whole process for uh, recapping the first few caps and uh, the next uh, and the rest of the caps I'm gonna take off cam because uh, it's a lot more time consuming if I'm gonna film everything and uh, if you've seen it once then you have seen it <laughs> just reporting back I actually uh, are almost done with the recapping just uh, four uh, over here left and as you can see the ones that was uh, replaced by um, axial caps uh, looks okay all right, that was uh, the recapping of the first of two boards and uh, looks okay. I think everything went smooth, uh, nothing major happened, no uh, lifted pads or anything. Maybe one half pad was uh, lifted, but uh, that was not a problem. The second board uh, will be exactly the same and uh, I'm not gonna show that in this video. Okay, I think that is it for uh, this episode of uh, this Amiga 2000 restoration project and uh, as you can see there's uh, quite a mess uh, <laughs> here with uh, Amiga parts all over the lab and uh, other places as well <laughs> so next episode will be about um, the power supplies and uh, testing uh, the boards and the machines a little bit more uh, restoring uh, the keyboard perhaps so thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed this uh, video and uh, thanks uh, to my Patreons for the support. Uh, see you next episode, bye bye.